Filming videos as a solo creator is not always easy, especially when your hands are occupied. Going back to realize your camera is out of frame is a big waste of time and very frustrating. In this video, I will show you how this issue can be solved with the help of open source AI and an Arduino. Before we can start detecting objects and tracking their position, we need a way of precisely moving the camera horizontally and vertically. I started by designing a motorized smartphone holder inside of Fusion 360. I decided that these cheap 28 BYJ48 stepper motors were the way to go because of their decent amount of torque and ability to move at a controlled rate. Their small size also helps keep the design compact. Using their included motor controller, they can be connected to the Arduino and precisely positioned. With the help of three of them, we get all of the axes of motion required to move the camera to any position. Because DSLR cameras are quite heavy and bulky, I decided to instead use a smartphone as the recording device. While the footage won't be as sharp as on a high-end camera, many smartphones have good enough video quality and their much smaller size allows for the use of smaller stepper motors. After making some small changes to the design, I started 3D printing all of the parts. If you're following along and need some parts 3D printed or even CNC'd, you might want to check out this video sponsor, PCBWay. Besides offering quality and quick PCB manufacturing services, they also have CNC machining services and 3D printing, with many different color and material options to upgrade the look of your project. You can easily upload your 3D models to their website and customize the material to your liking before you place your order. Make sure to check out PCBWay in the link below to learn more. It was now time to put everything together. Since the motors need more current than the Arduino's 5V pin can provide, I used an external power source. I modified a USB cable by soldering wires to its end, then splitting those wires to power all three motor controllers. With the help of some zip ties, the mess of cables became more under control. I then glued in the lid and attached the top part of the device to the central stepper motor. Before I slid the phone into the holder, I installed an app called Epoch Cam. The app will be used to broadcast the footage from the phone's camera to my computer, which I can then access through the Python tracking script. The one downside is that while it is free to download, it comes with a watermark, which you have to pay to remove. This app is also only available on iPhone, so if you're on Android, then I recommend using Irian Camera, which does basically the same thing. I then attach the phone to the holder, which has a ridiculously simple yet functional design that keeps the device securely in place with a single M3 bolt. With the mechanical aspect of the tracker complete, it was time to work on the object tracking portion of the build. YOLO, which stands for You Only Look Once, is an object detection library for Python. While YOLO's pre-installed model already lets you track many things, such as people and vehicles, I decided to find a custom model for my use case. Because most of my videos involve soldering or attaching parts together, I wanted the camera to track my hands. After a quick Google search, I found an open source hand tracking model on GitHub made by the user of the name Kansik. I modified the given example code in the repository to give me the coordinates of the hand center relative to the center of the video frame. Here is the finished Arduino and Python code, which can also be found on GitHub. While you could technically run the tracking script on a Raspberry Pi and have it nicely integrated into the case of the device, I decided to use a laptop because of its superior processing power. I'm sure it will come as no surprise that even when put against a fully upgraded Pi 5, a mid-range laptop will still outperform it with its much faster CPU and GPU. Once I finished the object tracking code, I needed to connect the laptop to the Arduino. 
I did this by using a USB cable that lets the Python program talk to the Arduino through serial. With all the code uploaded to the Arduino and the phone in the holder, the build was finally complete. To test the build, I plugged in the power for the stepper motors and the serial cable into the laptop. I then ran the main script with the tiny version of the hand model, which I found has the best performance and frame rate. As I move my hand to the left, the stepper motors rotate to keep the center point of my hand as close to the center of the video frame. It even works with two hands in the frame by choosing the hand that has the highest confidence level. The code works by first receiving the center point of the hand that is being tracked, and then calculating the amount of stepper motor steps that are required to move the camera to that position. This is done by finding out how many steps result in one pixel of movement on the frame. Afterwards, the corresponding stepper motors are moved to their assigned positions. Once they're finished moving, they send a signal back to the script letting it know that a new calculation can be made. The script is also set to simultaneously record the footage from the phone to the computer. Here's an example of what it looks like. This device isn't limited to only hands and can be used to track other things too such as people, vehicles, or even specific colors. You can even train your own model to have a completely custom setup, which is something that I might explore in a future video. Alongside the automatic object tracking system, I also made a custom application using Python that lets you manually control the device. I added this in as an extra feature to help you make some simple but smooth B-roll shots. This build is definitely not perfect and can be improved in several ways. One thing that can be changed is the wobble on the center stepper motor. While the device works fine with this bit of wobble, changing it would add more stability and just improve the general build quality. The code could also be improved to be a lot quicker and more accurate. Since I am far from an expert in OpenCV, the code has lots of room for optimization. However, minor changes aside, I'm happy with how everything turned out. This was my first time making something with OpenCV and AI object recognition, and I still have much to learn about it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.